Tonight, I'm going to see Larry Carlton play at the Baked Potato. Uh, they're doing a four-night run, and it's billed as a birthday party for Larry's 335 and Greg Matheson's B3, which they both bought in 1969. It was a coincidence. I guess Greg called up Larry and said, hey, let's do this gig. Let's have a birthday party for our instruments. Now, I went on the first night. It's four nights, like I said, and I went on the first night, first show, and it was wonderful. And this is the last night, first show. I'm going to go in a few hours. I'm going to wait in line so I can get a good seat. And I'm going to have a big baked potato with some steak on it and uh, watch the show. Yeah, I guess I'll, uh, I'll miss that. <laughs> the very next day in the afternoon, Rick sat with Larry at the baked potato and interviewed him. Uh, go over to Rick's channel and check it out. It's already up. Now, Kid Charlemagne was just one day, well, a few hours of one day in the life of a very busy studio musician. Sometimes a great moment like that can define somebody, but Larry is not defined by that moment. He's defined by his solo work, his solo career, all the records he's done as a solo artist and the decades of touring and concerts he has done. These days, I think my favorite way to experience Larry is through his tutorials on TrueFire, his video lesson tutorials, which I have purchased. You get to hear him talk about what he does. You get to listen to him do what he does. And if you're lucky, you can pull maybe a couple of things out of it and, and put them in your own style. Uh, there are links below for his video tutorials on TrueFire, and I urge you to grab one. Anyway, I was talking to Rick Beato on the phone. He, he said, I'm coming out to interview Frank Gambale. I had asked Rick months ago if he would analyze and teach the show, solo, <laughs> solo, solo to Kid Charlemagne with me, which Larry played. One, it's one of Larry's greatest solos. And he said, sure. And I said, well, let's do it the day of the show. So we did, you know, we went through Kid Charlemagne here, and then we went to the baked potato. I got in line. He joined me. He was kind enough to join me in line. And, uh, and we got good seats. I sat, Rick, right in front of Larry. <laughs> and I sat right behind Rick. It was awesome. And we met Larry. He was super nice. All these guys are powerhouses. Um, Steve Ferroni on drums. Travis Carlton on bass. It's amazing. Great guys. I hope you like this analysis. One thing I really enjoyed was this. Realizing that it happens over the D minor. D minor 7 and then the F major 7. What I forgot to mention is it kind of lands on an E minor, so you end up with. And it's just a super interesting three, three note cluster that, that makes these chords sound so good. And it's so simple. It's like Larry cho chose the most interesting core three notes to bend these three chords in a nice way. And it's so simple. And not like a guitar riff at all. Like, I, you know, I don't know, know where that came from. The other thing, there's a little bit of swing in. Not that much, but just a little bit of swing, more than the rest of the solo. And I'd never realized that before. It's funny how 
if you, you go back and relearn something, you learn something new every time. It's awesome. Click link below if you want to check out Rick Beato's stuff. You gotta, I have the Beato book. It's great. He's got other stuff he offers too. Also below is the link for our online masterclass. Uh, we have over 100 hours of content and lessons. There's a 14-day free trial, so check it out. This note travels through all those chords. It's the flat third of B minor and the flat seven of B7. Yeah, so his, uh, the, the, thi the thing about the D minor, that's a, that's a very common jazz. That's a, that's a really common jazz progression there, gotcha. too. With a... <laughs> what gets tricky is what comes right after that. That. That's, that's just that. a minor pentatonic. That's still we know that, that minor, st still the same minor pentatonic, yeah. which is working all over yeah. there. Is, but yeah. then when it gets that, that uh, D minor, yeah. yeah, which is amazing. And the line that he plays, he's he's he goes right into the third yeah. of yeah. that B seven chord, yeah. which is which I love, and right up to the third of the E minor. But once again, he's in that. Minor pentatonic, the the ninth. But let me talk about what he does there because it's pretty pretty great. That's D minor with the yep. ninth thrown in. Perfect. And it's so easy on the hand. Yeah. It's just your index finger goes whoop. Yeah. But it's, so, it's so odd. The progression is odd, and it, and. The fact that he just plays through it like butter is amazing. And that, that was kind of all of our favorite part of the solo. That yeah. was, it was like, oh, he did that. Wow, what is yeah. that? And it's so simple and so friendly to the to your hand. Yeah. Look. It's a perfect out, outlining of a D major. Yeah. D major, D7 chord. Yeah. And once again, a ninth. Which is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, what very unlike what people played back then too. You didn't hear guitar players play. Especially with those inter yeah. intervals like that of a yeah. fifth, th those fifths, the yeah. power chord like that. It just was so odd. I mean, is that a keyboardist kind of thing or a yeah, sax player so. kind of thing? Yeah, more I think it's like a, more of like a, what a keyboard player yeah. would play. But that. It's just yeah. so interesting to the ear. I'd never heard anything like that. Then it goes to the uh, C major seven. And then the C major seven. Once again, it's. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's just an A minor pentatonic or C. C yeah. It, it's, a, it's the G major pentatonic. Which once again is the major nine pentatonic. He's doing those all over the place on there, which is great. Love that, that G major pentatonic. Probably because of all those Steely Dan songs and those G overs. You know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Be beautiful Absolutely. there. So what are we up to next here? Then it goes to that... Um, e minor seven, then the D over E. Yeah. And once again, he really actually uses chord tones. He stays there. Yeah. When Which the band is, drops down to D over E. Yeah. And so is he thinking like, that, that's like a, a, an E sus, E11, but he's thinking of B minor seven. Uh, yeah, which I can see. The great part of that is, uh, is when... Is that G to F sharp resolution that happens. It's so fluid. Gorgeous. I mean, it's amazing. And then it drops to A minor again, probably. Yeah. And once again, the ninth into yep. A. So. Yes. And then this, which is over. Over G. It's G6. outlining it. Yeah. Outlining it. With a little passing tone. Yeah. 
And then, um, but he's really staying to those chord shapes. Yep. Almost, uh, but 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 the chord shapes are always the upper extensions, or a lot of times are the upper extensions. Gotcha. Of them. Yeah, that's so what I didn't realize. Nice. He, he really is paying attention to the chords. Yeah. Which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but he's he really knows where he is. He's, and what he's, chord he's thinking in. like a jazz, he, he's playing like a jazz player, thinking like a rock player, play, or playing with the feel of a rock player, but like a jazz player would over the changes. Every time I hear an interview with Larry, he only he talks about all upper extension triads. Gotcha. Constantly. That's gotcha. it's how he when he said he talks about a major seventh chord and he'll talk about the three different triads that you can play on him, for example. So if he's on F major seven, he's singing F major, he's singing C major, he's singing G major. To get more like a Lydian, Lydian sound. So but he'll, you know. Beautiful. That's I learned those things from his solos. I learned where the really? how to get those, uh, grab those kind of ninths and thirteens and and elevens and things like sharp elevens and all those different triads yeah. up above that work with that chord and in that scale. In yeah. That key. I mean this this solo in particular, which led me to Larry's solo <laughs> records, some of which are out of print, but they had. The, expanded on that more and had more two five ones and things like that, and he would do it. Uh, he uh, well, he just stretch out more. Were you a fan of Room Three Thirty Five? Yeah, yeah, me too. That was yeah. it. Just lit me up that one. The next riff, isn't it? So he goes. Once again, and that's the best riff of the whole song. <laughs> it is, but it but is, yeah. what, you can yeah. see the C triad if if you play B flat thirteen. Mm -hmm. That, that's that sound. It's a Lydian uh, dominant sound. They gotcha. Play it. How he makes it great is a. That's so. Yeah. A jazz play. That's so rock, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's like perfect blend of those two yeah. concepts. Yeah. But then C triad over that. Oh, yeah, I just so love that. So sweet. Once again, that's a very, very Larry. Uh, he's using, he's got, it's over A minor, I think, there, um, or F major seven. But that's it, that's it, still that same. Yeah, so, a minor pentatonic. Yeah, and it's the major seven. But he actually does a half step into it, too. That's his, that's the guitar. Right. To me, that's what makes the whole solo, all those little half-step lead-in notes. Right. That's all Charlie Parker. Really? That's, oh yeah, Charlie oh, okay. Parker would do do that all the time. That's a real bebop thing. <sighs> then it goes. <laughs> to me, when he's playing that, he's bending into that ninth on the A minor. There's that, that gotcha. minor try there. Yeah. But he's, he's, he's landing on that six and that G's, G, it's always chord tones. That's what I love. I mean, that six. Yes. Beautiful. Once again, the ninths. And using that, uh, that same. What blows me away about that, it's so simple. I know. Yes. And the way it, it, it laces through the chord change. <sighs> like you said, it's the ninth. He's just, he's just hearing it. He just... Yeah. So oh, no, it totally beautiful. makes sense. It totally makes sense. Yeah. D minor 9, F major 7, F6. Yeah. Da -da. Just right to those chord tones every yeah. time. And in fact, in a weird way, it's the best 
repetitive phrase that works through both of those chords. Yeah. It's like the sweetest part of each chord. Yeah. The sweetest three notes of each chord. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's too perfect. <laughs> it's too good. Larry, you're too good. Okay, so then it goes to E minor. Yes. And this I understand. E minor pentatonic with a chromatic walk-up. Yeah, but the way... But then the way it, it, it flows into that is so strange. <laughs> so I'm thinking, when I hear it as a jazz, thinking like a jazz player, um, on the F major seven chord, is, is, is yeah. like the bebop, you know. Yeah. There. I just hear that. I yeah. just hear those yeah. those, those bebop lines there. Yeah. Uh, and that's the best. On the same record, we have. Whatever that is, yeah. Yeah, oh, and, and uh, it's very much a Larry uh, thing there yeah. with that major, yeah. that 13th. Yeah. Love that. And then. Yeah. And then. And I love the half step. Two oh. years before Van Halen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember seeing Harvey Mandel do that. Do you remember that? As yeah, yeah, yeah. Was Harvey Mandel, who was yeah. doing a lot of tapping before Van Halen. Yeah. So. But yeah, it was. Just so perfect. And Larry's endings were always yeah. sublime. Da, da, da. And right down to the third on that, on that chord, too. Yeah. I mean, could not have been a better. He, and he's going right back into that minor pentatonic area, but always back to the chord tones. And in that space, he's underplaying. It's the end of the solo, which I would want to go, you know. He's going. Well, what's great is that they have that that funky, yeah. the, the electric piano vamp that happens there, and, too. And the bass is phenomenal yeah. in that spot. It's just, I got to play it. Yeah. It's, and I never really heard this till I had the multi-track in my hands here. Let me just... <laughs> That, that is unbelievable, and, right? And that's, I mean, if I, I, it's so amazing, and he was so amazing to stop playing and just let let, let it play that through. happen. That bass part in that break is unbelievable. Yeah. One more time. I mean, no wonder they hired Chuck Rainey for all their records. Right. I mean, that's like, that's just out of control. I love, creative. too, that Bernard on this, is it's a very straight fill that he plays coming out of that, too. It's, it's, he does. This is great, but the way he comes out of it. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Very straight fill for <sighs> for uh, for Bernard to play there. It's really cool. It it just it makes the whole thing kind of come back to to, to to chill out. Yeah. But that that bass part is just un unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know anything like that, honestly. That's yeah. uh, that was so. Uh, it, it these multi tracks really reveal these things. Yeah. That's what's so great about them. Yeah. A level of creativity that I mean, no wonder. You know, I used to see his name on their records and. And this is why they hired him. I, d I think he's very underrepresented, and, and I think people should, uh, you know, I'd, lo I'd love to see more 
videos about him. Well, the thing I always heard about studio musicians back then is the guitar players often became stars. Mm -hmm. They would launch out. Lukather, Glenn Campbell, in the early days, Glenn Campbell. Yeah. Ray Parker Jr., Steve Lukather, Lee Rittenauer had a solo career. Larry Carlton couldn't wait to stop doing this and have a solo career. Mm -hmm. They all, you know, guitarists just launched from these things and harder for bass players and drummers to to launch into artist careers. And, I mean, in the 80s, really, you know, you had the, the session players playing in the 70s. I mean, Steely Dan was a really unique situation. Um, and... You know, in the 80s, it was I, I probably more band oriented. I mean, when I think about it, I think of bands in the 80s. Absolutely. So yeah. you, had the, you yeah. had the permanent person playing and you didn't have session guys on. Yeah. And then you had you had uh, great artists would hire session guys like Mike McDonald or Kenny Loggins. I did a bunch of Kenny Loggins records. Mike McDonald would hire Steve Lukather. And, you know, I keep mm -hmm. forgetting that iconic parts would come from a lot of these guys with artists. But you're right. Bands started to, to take over yeah. and be you know, come to the forefront. Um, but Steely Dan was unique because they didn't tour. And they made enough money off their records, would not be possible today. They made no. enough money off their records that they could stay home and just stay in the studio constantly and hire these guys to be yeah. their band. And in the beginning, they did have sort of a core band. They did. David the Palmer was the lead singer for a little Denny while. Denny Diaz was in the band. Yeah. Scott Baxter was in the band early yeah. on. And, and yeah. uh, they all played. Together. I mean, Denny Diaz plays a lot of solos. He played on Do It Again. Absolutely. Played, which is which is one of my favorite yeah. solos. And Skunk Baxter. Uh, uh, Denny Diaz plays on My Old School along with with, with uh, Skunk Baxter. Both oh, trade solos both on that. Oh, those are some of my favorite licks ever. And yeah. then the famous Elliot Randall, really in, in the years... In amazing. Well, awesome, Rick. Thanks. Very well. Thanks for showing us the way. Tim. <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> All right, on to the next thing. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. If you are a subscriber, please ring the bell. It lets us let you know every time a new video is released. You can also support us by clicking the link below for the online masterclass. As I always say, we're up to over 100 hours of lessons and content, over a thousand videos, and we add more every month. There's a 14-day free trial. Take your time, take a long look. We'd love to have you join us.